couple of years, the actual support network around it has grown, and we've got various colleges, we've got double IRSM, NEBOS, lots and lots of organisations who actually think this is a great idea, and hopefully you will too, okay? Three sections, I'm doing the first section which is about the background to the Locker Project, how it works, what we do. I'm going to pass over to a colleague called Mark Cuddy from Groundworks UK, Ground, sorry, Ground Control UK, um, who's going to be talking about how you can actually install this and use this with your operatives or your employees. And then eventually, last but, but not least, it's my colleague Joanne from Blackpool and Fowl College, who's going to be doing a little bit of a session about how students can develop skills and how other people can develop skills as well. So hopefully, half an hour, 40 minutes, you'll get a lot out of this. Um, it's not a lot of legislation, it's not a load of text on screens, um, but you hopefully will get a bit out of it. So where did it come from? Back in 2015, the HSE were looking to help GB work well and some of their other initiatives, and they came up with this question, and the question was, how do we help vocational students or apprentices protect their future health and safety in college and enter in the world of work? To be honest with you, if you take the students and apprenticeships been out of there, it's about protecting everybody in work, okay? It was aimed the students and apprentices, but it affects everybody. And I know we're here today at Health and Safety Expo, and there's loads of us here, but we've all got people in our workplaces, when you mention the health and safety, they yawn, they think it's just words, yeah? If you've ever seen the Tom Hanks film, Big, where he's in the, the boardroom with all the developers for the toys, and he says, I don't get it. I just don't get it. There's lots and lots of people on the shop floor who don't get it. They do it because they've got to, because we tell them to, because they know the HSE are going to come in. But they don't really get it. Locker. Locker's about changing that concept. So it's about behaviours. It's about engaging with people and getting people to think about things in a slightly different way. So what we do with Locker, we take lots and lots of different things. So we take different different approaches, we do a bit of research, we learn, we identify, we instill fun. Health and safety, I, I've still been health and safety officer for 20 years and I can't remember going to the session where they said health and safety training has got to be boring. Yeah, um, but a lot of it is. And we're talking about not doing better death by PowerPoint. And I'm studying with 427 slides, no I haven't, I haven't. But I'm studying presenting to you, but I have to get the images across, okay? So hopefully we put lots and lots of input at the top. Down at the bottom we have a raised risk awareness, and whether that be for 16-year-olds or 45-year-olds, it's about raising that risk awareness. It's about producing resources, valuable resources that can be shared across communities, across colleges, across schools, even across the world. We did a locker calendar last year, it wasn't me with no clothes on. Um, but there's a copy in Nigeria, there's a couple in America, and people have asked for them and we've sent them over. Okay? But ultimately it's about reducing ill health in the future. We know about safety, we've been doing safety since 1974 and before really. But it's about reducing ill health, and I know there's a big emphasis on that across the whole, so like days, three days, and across the whole spectrum at the minute. But that's what it's about. With regard to the students and the way Locker Project works, you have all seen this at some point. Tell me and I forget, teach me and I remember, but if you involve me I learn, and that's what Locker Project's all about. Locker Project is about getting students or your employees to actually do some of the work. It's not about you standing up in front of them and presenting back to them, it's giving them the opportunity to actually teach us, and you'll see that in a minute. So this is the process, a bit like risk assessments really. Research the health hazards in the occupational area that they're in. So whether we've got a construction school, or hair and beauty, or engineering, or whatever occupational area you guys work in, look at the health hazards, look at the things that can go wrong. Look at look the things that have to be done to reduce the risk. And let them come up with the answers. Let them be as creative as they want to be, make it fun. And when Joanne comes up in a minute, you'll see the bit about making run a competition. Joanne's comments, they ran a competition, and it was really, really good, and you'll see the outcomes of that at the end, okay? Let the group teach each other. Let the students, or let your workforce, actually teach each other and come up with ideas themselves. Ultimately, teach us. 
like in these following examples. Now these are a couple of examples that we've done at Preston College. First question, okay? Audience participation. Can anyone tell me the difference between nuisance dust masks, FFP1, FFP2, FFP3? Yeah, yeah, I got that, yeah. But if you're going to do it properly, right, it's about this. It's about, you've got your nuisance dust mass at the end, you've got your FFP1 that offers four times protection, FFP2 is 10, FFP3 20. If you put that in front of a person or a young person and try and get them to remember it, they won't remember it. So we got our science students to do an experiment, and all they did was they sucked talcum powder through various different types of masks. And they came up with this. As you can see, not scientific, not health and safety labs or anything else like that. It was basically squares cut out of a t-shirt, talcum powder, sucked through a mask, into a funnel, onto this piece of black material. That white dot on them actually shows how much talcum powder was drawn through each mask. It's visual. They remember when we tell them to put their masks on now, and you'll see some more about masks in a bit. When you see that, and I'll just, just in case you can't see at the back, that's it enlarged even further. So if you're talking about someone who's working with asbestos, or silica dust, or any other of them other dangerous dust that we actually expose our staff to on a daily basis, depending on the type of mask that you use, potentially, that's what could come through. Your FFP3, there's a circle there in the middle. It's very, 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 very little dust on there, okay? But you can see the white dot gets bigger as we go backwards through the quality of masks. Dead simple, they get it, okay? Go back to the Tom Hanks scenario before. I don't get it, I don't get it. They do now, okay? Doesn't have to be about dust. It could be about this. This is a demonstration of what would happen if we wore safety boots on the construction site. I'll restart it in a minute. Oh, bullseye. So, as you can see, no damage done. I don't need to be started because all you missed them doing was going, oh, bullseye! Yeah, and this is what you do on a construction site. That's a 16-year-old plumbing student who, when we turn around and now say to him, you need to put your boots on, he understands why. It's not because I've said, or Mark, or the HSC, or anybody else. He understands now what could go wrong. There's another half to the video where they actually have a trainer, and they put the tomato in the trainer, drop the boot on it, and the tomato goes... Pfft. Okay? But obviously I didn't want to show it up. Okay? There's lots and lots of practical, simple experiments and ideas that you can use. One of them is the glove-off challenge. If we've got time at the end, we'll run the glove-off challenge. Okay? It's the very first one that came up, and it was from students in South Essex College. We'll run that at the end. We'll see how much time we've got. Colleges and employers who have got students going through apprenticeships or training schemes, they can actually use the Locker Project evidence as evidence towards the qualification. We've looked at construction, we looked at science, this is actually here, Jason. Left hand side of the screen there, health and safety practice in the salon, so it's not to do with construction. The knowledge outcome says, be able to maintain health, safety and security, state the difference between hazard and risk, describe hazards that may occur, and state the purpose of PPE. Locker project fits all them different criteria. You get them to research the problem. You get them to look at the alternatives and the solutions. You get them to demonstrate back to us what they can do. Produce the resources and share them. It's all about sharing the good practice. It's free. If you want to run a locker project in your organisation, it doesn't cost you anything. There's lots of people who can support you and help you along the way. But it's free. Share the resources, whatever you come up with, share. And in the middle there is some of the evidence that's actually been created in the past. We've got posters, leaflets, videos, presentations. There's all kinds of stuff. And you'll see some more of that over the next 20 minutes. Question is, does it work? If you go back to the screen at the very beginning, they were three adults who were all stood there yawning, blah, blah, blah. Don't get it, right? These are our students. These are 16, 17-year-old kids who've actually gone through, done a locker project, 
and they've got it, they get it at the end, yeah? And whether you're talking about the science ones at the end there, or joinery students, or engineering students, they get it. And that's what it's about, it's about starting the process when they're young. So when you get to my age, yeah, have to let someone's fingers to add it all up, but when you get to my age, I've already done harm to myself from when I was younger. I remember being stood on a roof of a garage when I was 12, throw bricks to it, and now I know that it was an asbestos sheet roof. Yeah, we did it. But this is about stopping that, and it's about getting them really, okay? I'm gonna stop talking now, because my colleague Bart's gonna come over now. If you wanna find out anything about it, you can go on lockerproject.com, you can go on the Safety Groups UK campaign page, you can see social media, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever you want, for Locker Project. And we've actually got an email address there if you want to get in touch. Get in touch by whatever means you want to do. Okay? If you search for me on Twitter, I'm at D42, at D42. And I'm a nosy get really. I really am nosy. But I put all my Locker Project stuff on there and it's all over the place. Okay? That's me done. So that's the death by PowerPoint for me. Yeah, you haven't got to listen to my screamy scouts voice anymore. Over to Mark. Thank you very much. Can everyone hear me okay? Well, very good afternoon to you. And I haven't got any PowerPoints or any slides because the Locker Project really, from a practical point of view, it's not about that. It's simple, it's visual, it's practical. And if you're walking past, come take a seat and come and look to see what I've got to show you. My name's Mark Curry, HSQE, National HSQE Compliance Manager for Ground Control, a main um, construction landscaping company, deals with everything outside. I cover the country and I'm very much on the front line with all the teams on site. Drug and alcohol testing, face fit testing, injury avoidance programs. I go on site, you're, all my, you're my workforce and I've just got you in off site and I said, we've got to have a briefing and we've got to talk about dust. How can I motivate you about dust? And you're thinking, oh no, all I want to do is just go on with work. It's job and not. At the end of the day, we get a flyer, get home early. But I've got to tell you about dust, about Regulation 7 in the posh, about exposure control. And you've got to understand that. And how can I demonstrate to you the approximate daily exposure of silica dust. How can I demonstrate to you the approximate measurement of a week's exposure of silica dust? And you're sitting there and you're thinking, oh no, it's not going to take long. Regulation 7, prevention of control to exposure of substances hazardous to health. Does it feel good? And you're looking here thinking, oh no, well it's not about that. Because we can still get over that message. We can get over that message. Can you hold that penny for me? You don't need to spend a penny just yet. Can you hold that teaspoon for me? So, what I'd like to show to you and demonstrate to you, when we talk about safety, what does safety really mean? What does health really mean? Well, safety is about protection and physical injury. If I cut my finger off, you can see I've got a finger missing. But if I talk to you about health, what does that mean? It's about the protection of minds and bodies of people from processes, materials, procedures within the workplace. In your working environment, you're thinking, oh, we just want to, you know, get home. What have you got to show us? So, but I'm lucky enough to have involvement in this locker project and I'm not focusing on colleges, um, apprentices, I'm focusing on the SMEs. We have about 150 to 200 small field teams, the man in the white van. How can I get that message? How can I get engagement and look at that positive interaction and reinforcement about dust? Okay, so a couple of things I want to show you to start with. Can you hold that penny up for me? A little bit of dust there. Hold it up. Turn it round. Can anyone see that little bit of dust on there? You can hardly see it. That's an approximate measurement of a, the daily exposure limits 
to silica dust. It's only tiny, you can hardly see that, but you can most really breathe that in with, and maybe more. And that's it, just a penny. Have you got that teaspoon? A little teaspoon drawn into quarters. How can I explain to somebody about that? So the approximate measurement of a week's exposure is about a quarter of a teaspoon. It's not a great deal at all. But you can see it, you can physically see it. If I had this on a graph showing you the weight or the percentages, the size of a piece of silica dust is approximately 0.3 microns. However, the size of a whisker to prevent a good face, good face seal is 7 microns. So we need to shave, we need to be clean shaven within the workplace to control that exposure. How do we do that? Well, simple. Razor, shaving foam. We must shave and we, it's all about the seal. We must have a tight seal to get a good fit so we don't have any leakage and breathe in that, that silica dust. That causes us silicosis 10, down, 10 years down the line, a chronic disease that develops over a period of time, COPD, occupational asthma. But to try and explain that to a man in advance, say five, six, seven, eight years down the line, he hasn't cut his finger off so he can't see it. To see it in his lungs, it's harder to demonstrate that. So about maintaining the seal, that material there, you, you know what the material feels like. So one of the things students have come up with to, for us to take it into the workplace is try and demonstrate about not being clean, clean shaven. So if I show you here, balloon pump, I'm not gonna make a poodle or anything. We've got a little bit of Velcro around there, which indicates a stubble, because clearly you've got a bead. And if I got this mask here, and you put that over, you're not gonna get a seal. It's not gonna happen. So we've got a little bit of Velcro around there and another little bit of a smoother material which indicates the material around the mask. That's clear. So what we do, we try and demonstrate the leakage on that. So we'll put the balloon over here and we'll get the seal. I hope I'm a little punch if this goes wrong. It's a good seal there. And I'm showing this to the workforce, trying to engage, trying to encourage them to understand about dust. You're going like that. It's not going to pop. But I can't, that air's not coming out. However, if somebody's got stubble, and I peel that down very, very slightly, The air leaks. So if there's leakage, you have the potential to breathe in silica dust. And again here, you can do it exactly the same with this here. A little bit of Velcro around there. Doesn't work. If you put it on that end, you get the it's little props, it's easy to show people how you can improve that. So the next one I'll show you is a normal syringe. Okay, there's nothing over the end of it. I'll get a little bit of masking tape. I'll put that over the end. I can't pull that down. So I'll have a few of these when I'm doing a briefing or if I'm gonna do Facebook testing, I would encourage this to, to start to show them prior to it. So that's not going to work. If I get a pin, put that in the end, one little pin hole. If there's a hole, if you haven't got a seal, you're going to breathe silica in. Long term can cause damage. So far, so good. Better than this, is it? Yeah. You yeah, come on, come on. Right. So the next test is. This is the outside working environment. 
in here, this is the dust. So what we will do, that weekly exposure on the teaspoon, we'll pop that in there. I'll screw that back on here. This is our lungs. If we try our lung capacity, we can get quite a bit of air in. We can draw a, a bit, quite a lot of air in. This is just a simple little pump. That's nothing compared with the capacity that a human has in their lungs. In the middle here, in the middle of here, I've put my lung. When do you have the opportunity to hold a lung up and show your work for You don't. A little bit of foam indicates the lung. I give that a little shake. So you imagine somebody out on site working hard, physically, their heart rates increase, they're working, and they get exposure of silica dust. One little press of that, working environment, lung, uh, airways, uh, lung in the middle. That's it, there's no filter in there. So what has happened, do you think? So let's have a look at the lung. Let's dissect the lung. There we go. That would indicate that one little breath. Can you see the little blue dot there? So then, I'll cut a bit of the lung off. Not everyday occurrence. and you can still see it deep in the lungs. That is what silicosis does. Hardening of the lungs causes fibrosis, hard scar tissue, and then you have the inability for your lungs to work properly. You become breathless. Chronic obstructive preliminary disease. And it'll affect you later on in life. So really, that is about my demonstration about how I would give a, a briefing to my workforce instead of reading them chapter and verse and they go, do you know what, that was okay. And I'll ask them a week later, what's the daily exposure limit of silica dust? Oh, that little bit on the penny, it's not a lot, is it? And they remember it. It's about leaving that longer lasting message and we've got to try and find different ways to communicate to our workforce that are set in their ways. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. But I believe with a lot of projects you can. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. And over to... Oh, sorry. Lovely to see you all, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'd now like to entertain you. Um, when at Blackpool and Fowl College we looked at the Locker Project, we saw something that was a unique opportunity to truly engage with our students. And we saw the examples that had been given by Preston College, South Ethics College and College Gwent. To the projects that they'd done and thought this is something we've got to be involved in. But we decided to run the locker project in a slightly different way. Now, our college, we have about 18,000 students, 1,200 staff, and we have a lot of the curriculum areas that, that Dave has as well. We have construction, we've got engineering, we've got hair and beauty, we've got maritime, we've got offshore. And how am I going to find a project? What can I do that's going to engage all of these different areas in health and safety? So we came up with the idea of the Locker Project competition. The college has been involved in this since 2016 and we've run it twice as a competition. So what we decided to do is we set our students in each of our curriculum areas a brief. We said, you are going to present to us a health and safety project about using Locker. We are going to ask you to look at the areas in which you're going to be working when you go out into the world of work as the next uh, generation of employers and employees. We want you to identify the health issues in that area and I want you to present to us your findings. So, 
And in the first year, 10 of our curriculum areas entered the competition. And we brought in a panel of judges. We had Anne Foster from the HSE. We had Karen, uh, who was working with uh, Locker at that point, And also Jeff Lambert, who was chair of Central Lights Group uh, for IOSH. And the 10 curriculum areas that, involved, that were involved in the project came up with some of the most fantastic ideas, which I'm going to talk to you about a little more in a minute. So this year, a number of weeks ago only, we ran the project for the second time as a competition. This year, I had 26 projects entered, 11 made it through to the final. But the students were so engaged with the project and so thrilled with what they'd seen in the previous year. They wanted to make sure that this year that they were involved and they'd also entered a project into the competition. So some of the topics that were covered, dust and boots from our construction team, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Healthy eating. That was from our access students who actually spent time interviewing their staff about what they were having for lunch and also what activities were they doing. Most of the time the interviews came back from the staff that they were eating their cheese sandwiches at their desk answering their emails. The students then showed the staff all of the different apps that were out there available on their phones that they could use to make themselves more healthy. That included diet advice, exercise advice, all sorts of things. All of these were free. After that training, they went back and re-interviewed the staff. Gone with the cheese sandwiches, in with hummus and 30 minute walks around the campus. It was absolutely fantastic. So not only have we engaged our students, we've also engaged our staff. Now the next one, uh, itching time over, I was going to talk about. You're probably wondering what that's all about. Well, one of our curriculum areas is Society Health and Childhood Studies. And we were training nursery nurses to go out into the workplace. And one of the issues that they had found was nits. We've all been there. If we've got children, we know the horror of nits. But how to get rid of them? Our nursery nurses didn't want to put chemical preparations on their head every five minutes. So they came up with some homegrown, homemade recipes, which they demonstrated for the judging panel. And they were fantastic. I am never going to look at onion and garlic in quite the same way again. Now this year as well, we've had a number of other entries. The heading of the slide is board games, interviews and rap. Well, the board game was all about dermatitis. In fact, if you'd like to play this later, we shall demonstrate. But our students came up with a board game which they could play to show the hazards and issues around dermatitis and how those could be managed. And in fact, on the day, we had our competition panel playing the game, which was fantastic. Uh, Anne did very well from the HSE. She did manage to get all her questions.